Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to the Montevina Maps Team's virtual poster presentation. Maps Team is a program run through the Milwaukee School of Engineering that assigns a protein to high schoolers each year. This year we were assigned the obscure pro er, we were assigned the protein family of globins, and we decided to compare neuroglobin to Hell's Gate globin. Originally, we were planning on presenting at the Experimental Biology Conference in San Diego as a part of the ASBMB Host Society, but this way you can enjoy it from the comfort of your home. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. That said, I'm going to hand it off to Aline to debrief our abstract. All right, so we looked at the bacteria Methylacidophyllum infernorum which is an extremely acidophilic, aerobic, and methanotrophic bacteria that was discovered in the geothermal vents in New Zealand. And as our assigned protein was globin, we looked at its unique globin, Hell's Gate Globin 1, which has the unusual ability to bind to acetate as well as oxygen with a very high affinity. We also looked into the ligand bonds of Hell's Gate Globin and how the low pH conditions that M. infernorum lives in affect them. We compared Hell's Gate Globin with a structurally similar protein, human neuroglobin, in order to speculate on their functions by better understanding their structures. And using JMOL, we isolated some main structural differences. And these were a shorter C and E helice in, and the absence of a D helix in Hell's Gate Globin, and the presence of a distal glutamine in Hell's Gate Globin compared to histidine in neuroglobin. And in Hell's Gate Globin, we discovered surface depressions, xenon pockets, and distal residues that facilitate fast oxygen binding and slow oxygen release. And finally, we examined the possibility of both of these proteins' involvement in redox reactions as their function. We began our research by looking into the structure of each unique globin, and starting with neuroglobin, it is a globin present in the nervous and muscular systems of humans, and it has a histidine at the location of E7 that anchors the heme to the globin, and that's the orange amino acid there connected to the heme. It has a histidine F10 that acts as a distal ligand in the absence of gaseous ligands, such as O2, and it is flexible. Um, it has a flexible D helix due to its longer CD loop seen in the white and black here. And its flexibility allows for larger conformational changes when interacting with gaseous ligands. And the heme binds reversibly with O2. And moving on to the structure of Hell's Gate Globin 1, it is a globin present in a bacteria discovered in New Zealand's geothermal vents. It is truncated due to its missing D helix, which would be next to the black loop there. And that limits its flexibility, which is in contrast to the very flexible neuroglobin. It has a histidine F8 that anchors the heme to the globin, and that's in the yellow. And it's imidazol ring, Orientation also differs from those of other globins due to methionine-130 preventing the rotation of this histidine to bind to tyrosine G5. In the absence of gaseous ligands, tyrosine B29 and glutamine E50 interact with iron and anchor the ENF helices, making these helices less flexible than in most globins. It is possible that this lack of flexibility allows Hell's Gate Globin 1 to maintain its structure in low pH environments, such as New Zealand's geothermal vents. And binding to the heme is also affected by this change in pH levels. The ferrous form of the heme changes coordination from pentacoordinated to hexacoordinated in high pH environments, while the ferric form of the heme remains hexacoordinated. At the three most sampled ligand exit portals, Hell's Gate Globin 1 has surface depressions, which may briefly impede the migration of a ligand as it exits the protein. These depressions increase the likelihood that the ligand will re-enter the protein, and these characteristics result in high O2 affinity and low O2 disassociation. 
So as we studied these globins, there are a few main differences that we noticed. The first was that in Hell's Gate globin, there's a missing D helix and a shorter CD loop, which is shown in black. In addition, Hell's Gate globin has a distal glutamine 50 on the E7 loop, whereas norglobin has a histidine on that same loop, and those are both shown in orange. Another difference is that the neuroglobin scheme is always hexacoordinated, while Hell's Gate changes from pentacoordinated to hexacoordinated when it's at a high pH. And this is significant because ligand migration involves correlated protein conformational changes, which means that it can change shape when it binds. There are a few similarities between these proteins that we noticed. Together, there are three homologous exit portals where ligands can escape. And in addition to these, there are two homologous xenon pockets, which are ligand docking sites, and these are present in both globins. Uh, similarities aside, Hell's Gate globin has a high incidence of reentry for ligands, while neuroglobin is less likely to allow ligand reentry. And this is everything I said just on a Venn diagram, so you can pause and look at it if you want. All right, so moving on to the proposed function of Hell's Gate globin that we have, we propose um, Hell's Gate globin having a function in redox reactions, and we propose the redox reaction aerobic methane oxidation coupled to denitrification. And this is a proposed function of the bacteria M. infernorum, as well as methanotrophs in general. And the reason it is significant is because it connects the global methane and nitrogen cycles and has a possible involvement in global climate change. And a possible electron donor for this reaction in Hell's Gate Globin 1 is acetate, which as we previously mentioned, Hell's Gate Globin has a very high affinity for. And also aerobic methane oxidation coupled to denitrification has been observed in other methanotrophs under hypoxic conditions. And this relates to neuroglobin, which may play a role in hypoxia regulation. So here's an image that kind of explains the process we are proposing. In green, you can see aerobic methanotrophs represented. And in purple, there are aerobic denitrifiers represented um, because oftentimes this reaction has to happen between two bacteria, whereas we are proposing it just happens in one. So on the left, you can see CH4 or methane entering the aerobic methanotroph, and you can see the chemical reaction through which it is oxidized. And in the yellow arrows, you can see biomass and then acetate, citric acid, or any other acids, which are possible byproducts of this reaction. And if this reaction was to happen between two bacteria, this byproduct would then enter the aerobic denitrifier, which you can see in the red arrows on the right. And this byproduct would be the electron donor for denitrification. But if you look back on the left, at the top of the aerobic methanotroph, there is a blue arrow that is showing denitrification happening within the bacteria. And the reason this is important to Hell's Gate globin is because of that acetate, which is a potential byproduct. And if this was the byproduct and therefore electron donor for denitrification, Hell's Gate globin could possibly grab onto that and keep it within the bacteria. So denitrification would happen within the bacteria itself. So moving on to neuroglobin, neuroglobin has also been shown to reduce nitrate to NO, which would allow it to regulate mitochondrial respiration and potentially prevent apoptosis. However, the exact mechanism of this function has yet to be determined. The pentacoordinated form of neuroglobin is most effective at performing this reduction, and the 6 to 5 coordination of neuroglobin regulates intracellular hypoxic no signaling pathways, hypoxia inducible factors 1 and 2 alpha. What are those? <laughs> um, they are master regulators of an adaptive response to hypoxia, and their stabilization protects cells against cell death. This is one of the proposed functions of neuroglobin. It has also been shown that the replacement of the distal histidine in neuroglobin with the glutamine in mutant neuroglobins allows for this reduction reaction to occur at a rate approximately 2,000 times faster than the wild-type neuroglobin. 
And interestingly enough, this is the mutation that is present in Hell's Gate Globin 1, whose disoglutamine likely plays a role in its involvement with redox chemistry. So here is a diagram showing the proposed reactions that neuroglobin helps facilitate. In reaction one, you can see the nitrite is reduced to NO um, through interaction with the heme. And then in reaction two, that NO binds to the heme. And on the right side of reaction two, that is the NO coupled with the heme. And this reaction is what's facilitated by neuroglobin. Uh, this is the reaction that helps with everything in this diagram. You can see the reaction takes place in the green circle on the top. The NO binds to the heme and neuroglobin, and when it ends up being released, it comes off as NO3. While it is bound to the heme, it helps with all of those things that the diagram shows. We focus on the alpha factors. Like I said earlier, you can see those in the green circle on the left-hand side in the middle. If you look on the key on the left-hand side in the bottom, you can see that arrows are showing an enhancement. So what this means is that that reaction in neuroglobin helps stabilize those alpha factors, which in turn increases the chance of neuronal survival in hypoxic conditions. All of those other possible routes are other proposed mechanisms of this neuroglobin function. All of them either enhance the chance of neuronal survival or inhibit cell death in hypoxic conditions. We focused on the alpha factors because those were the ones that we researched. That being said, um, here's our work cited. You can see uh, the three images that we used in the last four slides were all cited. Those citations can all be found on this page. They're also on our poster in the PDF. The globin images were not cited because we created those originally, but this is a good place to go for any further reading if you have any more questions. We'd also like to give a shout out to our sponsors. We are associated with Monmedi Public Schools. We are seniors at their high school. The MAPS program is run out of, out of the Milwaukee School of Engineering's Center for Biomolecular Modeling. We received grants from both the Monomedi Area Educational Foundation and the Greater White Bear Lake Community Foundation that allowed us to perform this research. We used software in Monomedi's fab, fab Lab to help us model and research our proteins. And we also got help from Medtronic's Maker Lab in modeling our proteins. Um, finally, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and we will do our best to get back to them in a timely fashion. Also, feel free to look at the attached PDF file for a slightly more in-depth summary of our research. And if you are interested, follow us on our Instagram at MottMaps for more updates on our work as well. Thank you for tuning in.